really don't, but Joe Douglas somehow, some way must have the magic t- touch because I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. This guy just brought in Hassan Reddick, a two time Pro Bowler, two time Pro Bowler to an already elite defensive line. You know what? We're gonna talk about it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> JD's next up. Chef JD. I can do it all. I will never fall if the rain is harsh. You know that I got the mother, mother sauce. Man. You know I'm the boss. I know what it costs. Have you ever lost? I'm so worth to tell you I'm a renaissance man. I can do it all. I will never fall if the rain is harsh. You know that I got the mother, mother sauce. Man. You know I'm the boss. I know what it costs. Have you ever lost? I'm so worth to tell you I'm a renaissance man. Congratulations, brother. And here we go. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, listen, this is crazy. I'm sitting there picking up my daughter from my sister. Um, I get the notification, and it says it's the Adam Schefter notification, right? And I'm thinking, like, it must be like, okay, this no way this is possible. He was just on Connor's show earlier this morning. He didn't say anything about it. Maybe, you know, maybe it's it's something in the works. I opened up the tweet after I had a couple of minutes to go ahead and, you know, talk to my sister and all that. And Hassan Reddick is a New York Jet. Joe Douglas does it again. Somehow, some way, this man is able to get better after missing out on the Jadavian Clowney um, acquisition. Like, we were trying to get Jadavian Clowney. He somehow, some way misses on that and, and actually does better. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the New York Jets just got even uh, more elite on the defensive line. There's no other way to describe it. I, I'm still kind of shocked that it happened because you, you talk about something that was, I think, mentioned by Jake Asman a couple of days ago um, that most people probably weren't really thinking about. You, you look at a guy like a freaking uh, Hassan Reddick who's coming off of back-to-back Pro Bowl seasons, a double-digit sack season last year. The dude is a force not only um as as an edge rusher but also in their run game this is a first round talent you know what i'm saying that we've just added to the roster and what's crazy is what joe douglas paid for it like joe douglas literally got this guy on the roster got this guy on the roster for a 2026 third round pick that could become a second if he hits a couple of things i think it's like he has to hit double-digit sacks and play at least 67% or 68% of the snaps. That is a ridiculous bargain. I mean, literally, when, when I saw what we got him for, I, I, I really thought there's no way this is accurate. I didn't want to make this video until I was able to see it, um, I guess, across multiple uh, platforms, multiple individuals, like, confirming that was the purchase price for a two-time Pro Bowler that that is extremely explosive. Oh, and by the way, he's 29 years old. He's 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 tw- he's younger than Jadavian Clowney and better than Jadavian Clowney. Some are gonna say, "Oh man, this is you know Jets fans with their hyperbole." Jadavian Clowney, blah blah blah. No, really. In terms of of performance, in terms of what he's accomplished as a starter at the NFL level, he he has double digit sacks over the last four years. Like, like literally four years in a row, he's been in the double digit ter- territory for sacks. He's also been a force in the run game. I, I really don't understand. I guess the logic is that the price tag for the Eagles was too high because this is and somebody you just let go of and you don't let go of him for a third rounder that you're going to see in 2026. There's a chance that the current regime that the Philadelphia Eagles have in coaching, eh, GM might still be there, but the coaching staff, they might not even be there in 2026. And they traded a pick that they might never get to see or utilize. I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know how Joe D is doing this. I don't know what, what mafia connections this guy has. I don't know who's, who's, who's pictures he's got that puts individuals in a compromising position because these kind of deals shouldn't be happening. Like we, we shouldn't be getting these caliber of players, these quality of players for these price points. I mean, literally. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. That's what he's been doing. He, he's been making these ridiculous offers to guys who, who are worth more, and they're accepting them. And, and now he's doing it to, to really, really good GMs. I mean, uh, I'm having a brain fart right now in terms of the, the GM for the Eagles, but he's no slouch. He's done an incredible job of putting talent together. He knows, what he's, he knows his stuff. 
a third rounder in 2026 for Hassan Reddick. So I just, I saw the news. I couldn't believe it. Um, I wanted to go ahead and kind of gauge how, the, how, how Jets Nation is feeling right now. I've seen a lot of excitement about it, and as y'all should be, because this is one of those things where the Jets got so much better today at playing football. Like, this defensive line is riddled with first-rounders, uh, riddled with guys currently in their prime. Keep in mind that, that Hassan is only 29 years old. So for an edge rusher slash linebacker, which is what he's looked at, this is a guy currently still um, in his prime. So, like, I, I, I have a hard time understanding the logic. So some people I, I've noticed have been upset because, oh, well, you know, if we had kept, you know, uh, Bryce Huff, then we wouldn't have had to lose out on a future draft pick. If we had kept Bryce Huff, one, he got more money with, with the freaking Philadelphia Eagles. So we're talking about paying him, uh, what, 17 mil a year, roughly. It would have also impeded us from the ability of adding to our offensive line. And, and I don't know if that makes any sense. In terms of what we were able to do by not signing him to the type of contract that the Eagles gave him, we were able to bring in, you know, Tyron Smith, uh, Tyrod Taylor. We were able to bring in Mike Williams. We were able to bring in uh, Simpson. And then, of course, we traded for Morgan Moses. And now we were able to get his replacement. Yes, mind you, a little bit older and very similar in terms of play style, right? Smaller guys who can go ahead and beat you with speed. But we've seen, we've seen Reddick do it at a much higher clip for a longer period of time. Now, some will say it's because of the fact that like he was a full-time starter for the Eagles. I think he was between 65 and 70% of the snap count for the Eagles, but that's really neither here nor there to me. At the end of the day, the dude is also a factor in the run game, which is one reason why like, we don't know it for sure as Jets fans, but that's what we were told, right? That that Bryce Huff was, was potentially a liability in the run game. So, we don't have that problem with a Hassan Reddick, who plays to the clip of a Bryce Huff in terms of getting to the quarterback, but he can also be, you know, in, in addition to in terms of the freaking run game. And I, I don't, I feel like I, I, you know what, I do owe Joe Douglas an apology. I do, because I was one of the individuals coming into this offseason, as we saw this team just, just getting riddled and, and, and I, in my opinion, getting gutted. Um, to, to be at this point right now, in, in, in March, it's March 29th, and the New York Jets really, if you're really looking at it, don't have any glaring holes. You, we really don't. Yeah, you, you've got the only question mark in being the, the injury aspect, can these guys stay healthy? But when you look at this roster, the New York Jets don't, <laughs> they don't have any holes. I don't, I don't know, I really don't know how we could have gotten better in the off season. I mean, let's not forget, the team also gets better because Aaron Rodgers is healthy. He's coming back as well. So we're going to have him to add towards this 2024 season, which automatically made the team better. But now you're talking about the, the additions to the offensive line. You're talking about the, the addition to the defensive line. Like, what is it, like six now first rounders on our defensive line? Not to mention they're all get the opportunity to, in my opinion, in my opinion, um, I think the, the, the defensive line gets to eat more now because of the fact that it's a rotational defensive line, right? Uh, you got to look at how well our defensive line has done in terms of getting to the quarterback. Um, I think they the Jets have been number one in defensive uh, EPA over the last two years, right? And you're talking about a defense that hasn't had the ability to actually operate from a lead. This defense is built to go ahead and get after the quarterback. This defense is built to go ahead and, and get to the quarterback and, and disrupt, you know what I'm saying, plays behind the line of scrimmage. And you don't get to do that much when you're, you don't have a lead and you've got to go ahead and be more strategic in your defensive approach. You've got a bunch of dogs on this defensive line that can all get to the quarterback. You're looking at the AFC East right now, man, and you're, you're looking at the Miami Dolphins who lost some key pieces to our, their offensive line. You're looking at the Buffalo Bills, who, let's be honest, their offensive line wasn't that great last year. They didn't make much, many moves that you would feel like, oh, my God, they've gotten better this year. Uh, we don't know what the Patriots are doing, but who cares? At the end of the day, they're rebuilding. But not, nevertheless, like they're going to have a hard time trying to go ahead and stop these guys. Who are you going to double? Who can you actually double on this freaking defensive line is the real question. I don't, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can without potentially putting 
your quarterback or the running back or whoever's back there at risk of getting freaking just blown up. I think Hassan Reddick also last year had, uh, I want to say it was 16 tackles for loss. So this guy had 13 sacks, a forced fumble. Uh, he, had a, he had an overall grade of a 75.2. He was sixth or seventh in the NFL in terms of sacks. Like, I don't, over the last four years, I was looking at the kind of company he's in. He's like third, right? I think like TJ Watt is ahead of him. Uh, maybe it's fourth. TJ Watt's ahead of him. Um, wow, I'm forgetting old boy from the Browns, but he's ahead of him. Uh, and one of the Bosa brothers is ahead of him in terms of overall sacks. So, so personally, I, <laughs> adding this dog next to a guy like a, a Quinnen Williams, adding this dog next to it with a Jermaine Johnson, uh, we still don't know what Will, Will McDonald's going to be able to do. But of course, the Jets had a very, very high opinion of him to draft him as high as they did. I just, I sit here today, man, and, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited, man. I, I think the New York Jets have gotten extremely better. Now, Brandon, on all actuality, man, good luck to your, to you guys. Cause I don't know how you stop. I don't know how you stop that kind of a defensive line. We, we've got the best secondary in, in the AFC East. We've got the best defensive line in the AFC East. Um, your offensive line, I think, took some, some pretty big hits in the off season. So hopefully y'all can find a way to recoup some of those pieces or replace some of those pieces. But I, I just, I don't know how any offensive line in the AFC East, honestly, I don't know how any offensive line that we're going to face in the NFL can go ahead and stop all of these guys. It means that the quarterback's gonna have to go ahead and get the ball out of their hands quickly, which means a lot of short to intermediate routes, right? If that kills explosive plays, you know what I'm saying, uh, towards the back of the defense, then so be it. Um, keep everything in front of you. I love this move. I love this move. And I think the, the thing that I love the most about it is the pure fact that we, we can literally do whatever we want in this draft now. You know what I'm saying? For, for a brief moment there, there was a conversation that somehow, some way, um, it was possible the New Yorkers were going to have to draft a defensive lineman in the first round. And of course, that drove me insane. I, I've been on record as saying this defense can afford to take some steps back and it's going to be OK. It's, it's literally going to be fine. And uh, I, I can honestly sit here now and be like, I know that's not going to happen. Defensively, we're, we're solid. We're not doing anything there. Uh, maybe in the safety spot, we make a move there. That would be an ideal, like Chef's kiss. Uh, but but Chef JD, man, has been cooking all offseason, and he's been doing it um, at an incredibly efficient like clip. I'm talking about getting high-talented, high-caliber individuals um, in the building at, at relatively ridiculous cost, like cost that I just didn't think would be feasible. Uh, Ferris Grimm, I agree, man. I think they will resign him, if I'm not mistaken. His current salary for the year is like a $14 million dollar um, uh, 40 guaranteed, I believe it is. And then his his cap hit is 21 million. I'm not too sure if that's the cap hit that we absorb or that was the cap hit on if there's dead money involved with that for the Eagles. But I know that 14 million right now is a salary. But I, I don't think they make this trade without wanting to extend him. I would I would anticipate potentially a three year deal again at 29 years old. This is a guy who started every game uh, over the last four three years. So he hasn't missed time. You know, what I'm saying he's a constant on that defensive line. Uh, again, uh, with a, a very, very good, you know, Philadelphia Eagles defense, the, the kid was, I mean, the, the grown man, I apologize, he's 29. Grown man was really, really good at what he did, right? Uh, to make that defensive line as good as they were. I, I would assume we're going to have to give him an extension because I know one of the biggest reasons why he wanted to be traded was because they weren't looking to offer him an extension. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if that is the route that we wind up taking is giving him an extension and I'm okay with it. You give him again, 29 years old, still in his prime. Um, I would go ahead and, and go as far as giving him a three year deal, right? Maybe around 10 to $12 a year. I, I just, I can't believe that the New York Jets were able to pull this off. Like in, in all actuality, I don't know. I don't know what, what Joe Douglas, again, he's got to have something on some, some GMs in the NFL. Got to. Because these, these deals just don't make sense, right? The Ravens letting go of, of, of Simpson was kind of weird, too. This is a kid that was on the come up, you know what I'm saying, took the freaking left guard starting spot um, away from their original starter and played very well for them. This is a guy that, that you know, allowed Lamar Jackson not just time, but to be able to run. He was great in the run game. Like, again, tape before the Baltimore Ravens, it's very spotty. 
but the Baltimore Ravens are really good at developing O linemen, and you saw that last year with with a guy like Simpson. So I see T go in the back. Uh, T go, let me know when you're ready to come on. I'm not sure if you're ready. All right, cool. I see you there. Um, yeah, 67 and a half snaps. Thanks, Zachary. I appreciate that. Yeah, 10 sacks or more. Yeah, like uh, that's going to be what it would cost to make it a second, right? So at, at worst, the New York Jets give up a 2026 20, second rounder for a guy who's going to go ahead and, and play 68% of the snaps and get us double-digit sacks. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That's 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 first round talent numbers work is going to cost us potentially a second. Yeah, 100%. Give me that all day. Um, I just man, if 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 you know what, I, Tigo, I, I would love your take on this, man, because I, I know we talk about um, Jadavian Clowney, a couple of the other free agency aspects. I, I didn't really think Hassan Reddick was going to be possible, even though Jake did state a couple of days ago that he saw it as being a possibility. I thought it was more of a, of a far-fetched reach. But sure enough, here we go. Jody does it. So bring it in, Tigo. Hey, Tigo. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Doing great, man. How I said are you it. feeling? I said it right when I heard the news that Hassan Reddick might might shake free. I said, if you can trade for Hassan Reddick, you should try to do it as long as the asking price isn't crazy, especially once we lost Huff. And I was always in the same boat of I never thought this was realistic. I never thought this was going to happen. I never thought it was on the table because I never thought it was going to be a 2026 third round pick. Dude, that's not this year's third. That's not nope. next year's third. No. Nope. <laughs> right. And here's the best way to look at it, in my opinion is I am 50-50 split on the do we extend Reddick or not. <clears throat> really? I'm 50-50 on it. Because, again, I don't know how much hockey you watch. I'm a big hockey fan. But something that they do in hockey all the time is one-year rentals. It's a guy on the last year of his deal, and you trade an asset for that guy, knowing, like, hey, we're only going to get this guy for one year it's one year but it's a, it's an all-in year so we're gonna maximize the one year and so that's my whole th it so there there's a thing there and also because the how much money does he want so i don't well, know if i feel comfortable giving him 20 plus which is what he's gonna plus. be in there he's gonna no. be in that range of 20 plus yeah. per year this is his final payday dude if if the number is twenty plus per year, yeah, you can miss me with all that. I, I'm I'm not doing that. And that's um, what I think that personally. I don't think I don't think he gets more than Bryce Huff, man. I don't. Yeah, he and, does. He's, and, and way, I, he's better than Bryce Huff. He's more accomplished. He's more accomplished. But you gotta remember, age is a factor in this game, man. Like, Absolutely. yeah, I know he's twenty nine, but but you give Bryce Huff that money because he's twenty five. Like he's twenty five years old. Bryce that, Huff that, got that net. money, but here's the thing: Bryce Huff doesn't have any of the accomplishments. Bryce Huff, as far as the NFL is concerned, is he's but a one-hit he he one wonder. He, well, but why, though? 70%, right? In fact, I did the math. <laughs> if we gave Bryce Huff 70% of the snaps that freaking um, that Reddick has gotten, in terms of, of getting to the quarterback sacks, again, with the run game, it's the, the jury's still out, so I'm not going to talk on that because Reddick is really good in the run game. You can't extrapolate. This is the thing that I hate when people do when they extrapolate. You can't, the data. but in terms of but in terms of the sack production, right? What we want an edge rusher to be able to do, honestly, freaking Bryce Huff surpasses him if he gets the same types of, of utilization, like in terms of. But no, of you, the average you can't. You, but here's the word that you're using incorrectly: is the word utilization, because what you're saying is utilization in total number of snaps. What I'm saying is, and I was going to bring this point up, is what I'm saying is, is Hassan Reddick is not a massive liability in the run game. Huff is. You cannot have Huff on the field on first or second down. You can't. And if you play a smart quarterback who can maximize that ability to just get, like, hurry up the offense to take advantage of the fact that Huff is on the field, you run the ball right at him every single time because Huff's not going to do anything. Reddick isn't that liability. So when you extrapolate the data, you have to add not just, oh, Let's say he played 500 snaps and now he's going to play 700. That's three more sacks. How many of those 200 more snaps are run plays that give up bigger yards? That's it's right. a give and a take. And that's the way that I look at it. And I think Hassan Reddick, because he's not the liability in the run game that Huff is, would get more money. And it's because it's four years of double-digit sacks. I believe the last four years are 13, 15, 21, and 13. Yeah, it's, Huff it's has one year with 10 sacks 
one on the best defense in the NFL, according to PFF. That's what we were last year, the best defense in the NFL. And then the year before, on a top five defense, he had three sacks. So, again, a whole so, different conversation about those two guys. I got you. But, but then what, yeah. here's my concern with that. It, we, we all know Reddick wanted out of the Eagles because they wouldn't give him an extension. So do we think he comes here and plays on the $14 million uh, hit? Because I don't think he will. I don't think the Jets can afford for him to. Again, so like there if, have been conversations about all of the – there's already been reports that we're planning on extending him, that that's the conversation that's been had, but that he just wanted out of the Eagles kind of a thing. The, the, the relationship fell apart because of how Howie Roseman uh, handled the whole situation and how he handled the, the whole situation. Both sides did each other dirty is what I, is what I saw. Okay. But here's why I say I'm kind of cool with not re extending him if he's cool with playing on a one-year deal on the best defense in the NFL is this. is If we do keep him for one year, and then he walks in free agency, and he gets 20-plus in free agency. It's actually he would need to get 18-plus in free agency. So if he gets 20-plus in free agency, do you know what the New York Jets would get back in a comp pick? I think it's a third-rounder, isn't it? It is a 2026 third-round yeah. pick. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So technically, ah, we could have – I like If that, we Matt. keep him one, for just a year, let's yeah. say he does want 20-plus, and the Jets are like, dude, dude. Relax with all that, you know, and you have all that that conversation. And he's like, "No, I want twenty plus." He's like, "All right, cool. Like, we can't do that, man. We just can't. You're not going to take any of the starters' jobs on this defensive line because you're not going to replace JFM and you're not going to replace JJ. Will McDonald is on the come up, and and he's a stud. Like, you're gonna, you just come on, man. Be realistic here. And if he wants out, cool, peace. But yeah, man, I think. But I'm also nah, cool with extending him as long as it's not like 25. I would, I would love to extend him, right? I would, only because if you do that, you're talking about a defensive line with one, two, three, four, five first-rounders who all bring a different level of ability to get to the quarterback and or stop the run. Like, this is a complete off-defensive line, right? Like, yeah. it, you, don't, you don't see that in the NFL very often. I, I, would, I would argue that the only other line really comparable right now with, with the addition of a Reddick is maybe the 49ers, right? But even then, I think talent-wise, the Jets are, are deeper. I think um, we're deeper. They have a higher top end. Higher, higher top end. Yeah, top end. Yeah, they're top so, like, it, it's – I just – the pure fact that we're even having this conversation right now, man, uh, about how the Jets have gotten this much better uh, in March of 2024 when we were having conversations just two months ago about how, man um, – this sucks. Like, we thought we yeah. were just one piece away with Aaron Rodgers, but it seems like we're much further away. And then, like, here it is. The pieces that we needed, <laughs> we've gotten before the draft even gets here. I and, think it was that panic. Give... that panic. He lost, and then Zach Wilson Zach Wilson all over the field, and everyone started to yeah. panic. I think, I think Car Car I mean, Carlos Baldwin says it perfectly, right? I'm not, I'll be the first to admit, yes, yes, guilty. I, I, I definitely, I flamed him. Tigo's guilty. We were both on the same. We were roasting this man. I wasn't. I was, you know we were I mean, fighting in the group chat. What what I said when was, he was asleep. If a, even then, I was like, dude, relax. He wasn't gonna spend all this money. He wasn't gonna go. What I said, and this has always been my thing, is if a head was gonna roll, it's JD's. I would not fire him, but fans were calling for a head, and Woody is not an intelligent human being. So if he was gonna do the unintelligent thing and listen to the fans, which you know he he does both of those things he would fire JD. And I said, that's a bad move, but he's the head that was going to roll. But the other, JD has surprised me because my expectation was not Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses and this guy and that guy and Simpson and Reddick. But I was always like, I always felt like you put Aaron Rodgers on that team. If, the, if you keep everything the same last year, Except for the Achilles tear on Aaron Rodgers, we still win 10 games. Is anybody complaining? No. That that was always my level-headed. The O-line isn't as bad as people think it is. Needs help, for sure. Needed help, for sure. But it wasn't as bad as people thought. We were starting UPS drivers. 
Because I think that's somebody has to look that up for me. I'm pretty sure Newman was working at UPS before he came to the before he came to the Jets. I think that was a real. I might I might have just made that up. I don't know. Somebody looked that up. But he was sitting on his couch and then he started two days after being signed. Who's gonna win with yeah. that? And Zach oh, Wilson. We, we and got somebody in the Nathaniel back. Bobby, you are you ready, Bobby? You, you, Bobby, you get a thumbs up. I love Bobby. See, Bobby jumped on. I don't know if he's. I don't know if that was an accident or not. Bobby. Well, he might be getting his stuff situated. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave him back there. Um, I'll ask you this question because I am actually curious about this this thing, and this is why I'm 50-50 on the whole re-signing Redick situation. If we extend Redick, right, let's say we give him a three-year deal, four-year deal, whatever it is, uh -huh. I think that almost guarantees – that JFM is going to be on his last year with the New York Jets, that he is gone next year. Because the Jets can cut yeah. JFM in 2025 and take, it would be a six and a half million dollar dead cap hit. Cause remember we haven't touched his contract yet. We haven't restructured him. We haven't done any of that stuff. So you can cut him next year and save $10 million. I mean, yeah, you gotta, you gotta lose somebody. There's no way you can't, you can't, if, he, if you, re, if you resign him or extend him. And that number is between that 18 to 20 mil. You, there's no way. Somebody's got to get chopped. Uh, JFM is, is that makes the most sense. Um, again, his versatility, being able to play at the inside and outside, you, you kind of miss that. Maybe you try to replace that uh, in the draft this year. Get somebody in the fourth or the fifth that can sit behind him as a defensive tackle potential option. But, yeah, that's, that's the, I think, the obvious answer. If, if the price point is going to be that. You can't you can't you can't put that much money into your freaking into your freaking defensive line. Now, I granted, um, I love that it's four first rounders in free agency. That's insane. I didn't even think of it that way. But yeah, that's that's what Joe. How has many done. is across the whole defense? Have you have you the have you six. Add sauce and you had sauce and then you had CJ. CJ was a first, wasn't he? Mosley was Mosley not a first. Mosley was. I don't think he was. I think he was a second. Hold on. I'm pulling. It so up. I know I know it's Sauce. I know it's Quinnen. I know it's JJ. I know it's Hassan Reddick. Mosley was a first. No, it's Mosley was a first. So it's Mosley was the 17th overall pick. Jesus. It's Mosley. You've got. It's, it's Mosley, uh, Sauce, Will McDonald. Hugh, JJ, double, uh, Will McDonald, uh -huh. Ken Hassan Law. Reddick. Ken Law, yep. Uh, Solomon Thomas. Solomon Thomas. Oh, my God. Hassan Reddick. I, I didn't even Hassan count Reddick. Reddick. Yeah. Hassan that's Reddick nine. The 17th overall pick. No, that's eight. Half the defense, bro. Half the defense is freaking. Quincy was a third. Sherwood was a fifth. I'm just trying to think of players on the yeah, defense. The same here. That might be like those sneaky like guys that like. Why was this guy a first round pick? Man. Um. I just, I just, I can't. Oh, I thought Isaiah oh. Oliver might have been one. He was a second round pick. Hey, no. What's good, bro? Hey. How are you What's feeling? What's up? Right now, yeah. Good man. I, I just shot. I. I popped in because this is actually the same take I had on on Asvin and uh, and uh, Jets talk is how many first rounders we have now. Um, we have six on the D line alone. It's impressive, man. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, JJ Quinn and Kinlaw, Reddick, Solomon, Will McDonald. We added Mike Williams this off season. Tyron Smith. We got Sauce, AVT, we got Mosley, all of them first rounders, man. It's crazy. It's it's a lot of talent, man. It's a lot of talent. I, I look at this defense, and again, one thing that's crazy is like the one thing the majority of Jets fans can all agree on. We might not all like, you know, Coach Sala and, and, and question the coaching of some of the coaching staff, but nobody questions this defensive, the defensive coaching of Sala and, and Obrick. Everybody knows those guys know ball. And to give them this plethora of weapons to play with, to try to slow down a Miami Dolphins freaking high speed defense or offense, to try to slow down freaking Josh Allen by himself on an island. Uh, and, and then there's the Patriots. But you're talking about the ability for these guys to really, really open up the playbook. And I know they hate allowing those guys to go ahead and call freaking um, audibles and whatnot and but i think at this point man you you trust a guy like a cj mosley who in essence is another coach <laughs> on the field for you man I, I i i if you had asked me back in january or february what do i see the new york jets doing by by the end of march to go ahead and be better i don't know if i could have told you half of what joe douglas has done i, I really don't i don't see half of the moves he made 
I don't think anybody saw half of the moves he made. And yet here we are today looking at this and we're like, my God, Chef JD just just cooked. Like literally been been just just chefing it up the entire offseason. The New York Jets are a better team today. Since since Huff left, it was like a master class. I mean, he's done everything to cancel that out and more. And I mean, we wanted him to not be telegraphed this year. I think he's well accomplished that um, to the point where I'm not even going to tell him what he needs to do at 10. Uh, he has way earned the benefit of the doubt from us. And I'm so tired of people who literally sit back and they armchair GM. Like, he's got to do the – like, he's earned your tr- – like – yeah. If anything, he's proved to me that he's a way better GM than any, all of us put together, man. Honestly. All of us. <laughs> I, would love to, I would love to know. I have, I'm zero for zero when it comes to this offseason. Zero for zero. The only thing that I called correctly is that we would re-sign Solomon Thomas. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I am zero for zero. I did not call. I didn't have Mike Williams coming to the New York Jets, Tyron Smith, Morgan Moses, Joe T- uh, Simpson. Nobody. I, di- I, I didn't want in law. I didn't. I, I didn't even know who Fatu was. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet you had Mosley for the restructure, though, didn't you? Miles Garrett. I didn't. We didn't no? touch Mosley's contract. We did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did. Yeah. We did. We did. He took a pay cut. I he took a massive that. pay cut. I called that. Still be here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You had that. You had that. I said we should extend C.J. Mosley, and I got. And I got honest, roasted for it. Honestly, I think Reed and Carter are next, man. You cannot let them both go into the final year. You you can't, man. They would command far too much next spring. There's no way. I, I don't think you can bring them both back, man. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, no. I'm not saying bring them. But bo- well, I think you can if it's a band aid for Reed. I, I think if you can get him for a little two year deal, you can have you can say, Hey, you'll hit you'll hit the market before you're thirty if you do that. I think we talked about this, but the, short of that, I'm saying I'm going to Carter first though. For, yeah, Carter, give him Carter three years hundred percent. Um he won't do a four year I mean Joe doesn't do long deals, but he'll do three go throw the three at Carter, please. Would please. Would you, you know really what? go for Reed? I would go Reed over Carter. Oh, I think we can what? talk Reed down. I really think we can talk Reed down. Hold on. Hold Look, on. And, and, it, on. and it's Tigo. not a thing of I, it, I love them both, and I think their value is incredible, and I get what you're saying, but I think that you will have an easy, easier, not easy, easier time getting someone who can at least get close enough to what we're getting out of Michael Carter the second than what you're going to get from a Bro, guy. No. DJ Reed is a no, top man. 10 slot, no. dude, in slot, the NFL. Slot quarterbacks? Period. Right. No, man. Dude, I, the, yeah, the, but he, the, playing the slot is so difficult. I, I the next man up. In. I agree I don't think with how crazy you. it is to play the slot. It's insane. Dude, the the fact it, that he's played it at such a Michael high Carter clip. Fifth? You don't have the yeah. sideline, man. Like, uh, mm, Look, I get I all of the things that you're saying. I'm not saying – that the slot is easier, that outside is hard. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is I think you would have an easier time creating another, let's say, top five slot corner, especially this coaching staff, than you would getting a top ten cornerback. Like, unless you're using another pick on a sauce type guy. Like, if you're using another pick on a first-round guy on the outside, cool. Extend Michael Carter, use a first-round pick on a corner. You could convince me that that's the way that you could go. Oh, but man. DJ I... Reed and Sauce play every single play, and Michael Carter is only playing 50 to 60. That's that's the thing where I'm looking at it, and I go, Okay, I well, it... sign both of them. Screw this out. Ideally, crap. Let's ideally, go to a luxury tax system like the MLB, <laughs> and let, let's just let New York sports dominate. Let's throw all of the money. I don't care. Like, that's a perfect world, but like. Okay, so if you're throw if you're committing next year's one to a corner, then that means you have to go tackle this year, right? No, not really. You could just as easily extend Morgan Moses if you wanted I, to. 
I'm not saying do it, but you can just as easily extend okay. Morgan Moses if you want to. And I think people there, there, really need to accept the fact that Carter Warren is going to be a starting tackle next year. He maybe mm, I don't know about next. Well, maybe right 20, side. Twenty five. He is I mean, one he, of the tackles, left or right. I'm, I'm calling it right now. I'm shooting my shot. See, uh, mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, uh, if, if you're doing we got to see him Aaron this Rogers, year, but I think he can get there. I don't there. know, man. If Aaron Rodgers is still your quarterback, I, I don't think you, I think you 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 find a way to get an average player in there. You don't. How do you know what Carter Warren is? The guy I, didn't I, I have know, it yeah. all season because he was injured. The same way you don't know about moment, Izzy. The moment Izzy. he got healthy, he got thrown in to play a position that he wasn't ready for. That I'm makes just, me nervous, I'm, man. I, I mean, you're, I'm, you're, you're not wrong. It just makes me nervous to, to think like. Not saying that it's the right move. I'm not saying that, they, that, that, that that's what I want to happen. I'm just saying at a certain point in time, you can't keep throwing it. Like, there are other things. We're going to lose two corners this offseason. Can't keep going to the offensive tackle room. You used six picks on the offensive line. One, they got a hit. They got Some of them's got a hit. You know what I mean? Max or Carter Warren need to hit. And I are love you, Max, you, but I don't think Max is going to – I think the blood clots, blood clots messed him up. What are you doing with AVT? Are you picking up that option? Yeah. Oh, 100%. So, so 100%. same here. All right, yeah, same here. Um, I just fear, like, if we don't – like, I don't want to take – I want to slide back, obviously. I really do, even if it's just a 13. But, but if we don't get – a long-term tackle this year i fear that that telegraphs us for next year because you don't have tyron smith next year you don't have i mean we may we may have one of them but i just feel feel like that pencil and we're, what are we going to be picking in the late 20s at least yeah. 32 um, yeah 32 exactly so so but like that's why i want to slide back because then you got a first and a second we need two top 50 picks this year we really do I, th- I dude, I would, I want to get as many top 100 picks as possible. I don't even care about the top 50 because I don't. I think getting back into that, the top 50 is going to be hard. So I'm, I've, I've settled well, yeah. out with getting a third. Getting a, get another third would be excellent. S- same. But just that would give us two threes and two fours. I think we could get in. You know see what I'm saying? Yeah. But just to, That's... just to maybe quell some some fears, right? With this whole offensive line thing and blah 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 blah. blah. Because you could you so that you could use a asset on a corner theoretically. Expect it to hit free agency next year. Cam Robinson, Garrett Bowles, Taylor Decker, Ronnie Stanley, Pen uh, Penesol is gonna not gonna hit the the market. Uh, Morgan Moses, like Tristan Wirfs, Okafor, like there are guys that are going to hit the market that are going to be at least. You could be like. Eh. Carter Warren's not making any money. You 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 tell me. I was fully expecting this year's offensive tackles to be Carter Warren and then like Cam Robinson because I thought he was going to get cut. I mean, I if you have Tip that. Tip Tipman in the center and AVT, then Carter Warren on the right is not going to look so bad. Not gonna He's look not. So bad. I'm, oh, you, and, you, and that's why I'm like I'm sold on Tony Adams because I'm like, bro, we need guys that are minimal, dirt cheap. Like, yeah, could we use an upgrade yet? Yes, we could use an upgrade there, but you can't have superstars everywhere making five to ten to fifteen million. You can't. You got to make this hard decision. Sharp, Sharp Instincts says this is. I, I got to discuss this. I I, I can not disagree yep. more. I couldn't Same. agree more. Same. Um, Philly knows their team and targeted Huff over Reddick. Sent Reddick here for a valuable pick and stole Saquon. Joe D comes out in second place on the deal and is still being schooled by this, by his old boss. Listen, um, first and foremost, I, I him, actually buddy. think Nick Sirianni is a big reason why some of these guys wanted to go ahead and, and, and not give a hometown discount <laughs> to the Eagles. Nick Sirianni, to me, throws the biggest I tantrums. I, I, I look at this dude, and I feel like he's a, a, a teenage boy playing Madden, given the reins of an NFL team. Um, he's out of control. He doesn't control his feelings. And a lot of these grown men aren't drawn to that. So, no, he wouldn't give them a discount to go ahead and stay there. So they had to adjust course. We let go of a guy that we all know is a liability in the run game to get a guy who can give us the kind of production. Well, he's been more consistent at giving the production. I just heard myself. Yeah, I think Dane's headset just moved. 
<laughs> oh, all right. That threw me for a loop. All right. I'm out real quick because I want to throw it right with what you said. Yes. And the thing with him being a liability in the run game, you know who said that in a press conference to the media? Howie Roseman, the GM that just paid Bryce Huff. Please continue. My man. So, so ultimately, to say he got schooled, I mean, you're talking about a 2026 20, freaking third round pick. There's, there's no way of knowing if the coaching staff will even still be there in 2026. And on top of that, the Saquon thing. Um, no, y'all didn't. Y'all didn't steal Saquon. Y'all overpaid Saquon. This is a guy that's been injured more than he's been on the field over the last couple of years. And granted, he's a, is an outstanding specimen. But let's not pretend like he's lived up to the hype of what he was supposed to be. You didn't steal Saquon. You, over, you paid him a bunch of money that I don't think most teams would have paid him. So, And you paid him that money to come home. He's from the area. Like, so for me, that whole logic of, of stealing Saquon, no, I don't think so. I, I think ultimately, yeah, he's a good running back. He's a great running back. Um, I, I still think y'all overpaid for him. I'm not sure if, if Sharp Instincts is, is an Eagles fan or a Jets fan, but I still think they overpaid for him. Um, I, I just I look at this thing, man, and I just I have to disagree wholeheartedly. Uh, Me too. It, it, I, I don't. I mean, I don't know what you guys think about it, but I saw that and I was like, schooled him. But 2026 third. What do you? And if, and the other thing that you have to take into this name. consideration is also like the fact that the Eagles are starting to get desperate. They need to win a Super Bowl. That's right. They have a quarterback contract that's about to explode, yep. and they don't have a quarterback that can win with his arm. Hertz is not an elite quarterback. He is a, an elite athlete who plays quarterback. People need to stop confusing the two. Like, that's the whole thing. They're losing people left and right on this team to old age and to free agency. The entire <laughs> offensive line needs to get revamped. They lost... They lost, um, not my lotta. They lost. Who's the guy that again? Jason Kelsey retires. They lose the other guy the other time. Lane Johnson is a walking injury. They've seen that Devontae Smith is not the guy. AJ Brown can't do it by himself. And they went and they had to overpay for Saquon Barkley because they have to win games yep. through the run. If they yep. don't have a run game, which last year they really didn't have. They struggle with it. Yep. They can't win games. And then you keep adding to the fact that every year that defensive line is getting older and older and older. And so, like, Josh Sweat is is Josh Sweat. But, like, Graham is, what, 34? 35? You know what I mean? Bradbury and Slay both regressing, so your corners Just lost aren't your, getting better. Your elite center, he's done. He retired. Yeah, Jason and Kelsey retired. Get, 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 you that's huge to too. Look. That's massive. It, it really to is. Look. You know why it's massive? Because I've seen he's freaking hard. He is, and in all actuality, their IQ. I've seen that man calling adjustments mm. on the offensive <laughs> line significantly more so than Hurts has. If you watch any Eagles freaking game, it's not Hurts calling protections. It's it's freaking Kelsey. Calling protections, yep. letting them know, like, boom. So that's a huge loss. And I don't I don't know if the Eagles fans are ready for that yet because we're about to find out just how much of a football IQ Hurts really has when he has to call his own uh, on protections because I don't think he Kelsey was massive, Maybe Dickerson man. is there. Dickerson is still there. Dickerson played with Kelsey for so long that he can call protections. Yeah, see, you I, can, see I hate when people think that, man. Like, it, it's not – it's not – yeah, he could do it, but can he do it at an elite clip? That's the question you got to ask. I'm not saying you have to get to an elite clip. I'm just saying you're you're absolutely right. But, like, again, the, I, I mentioned this in a different group chat that I'm in, and I said the Eagles are starting to get desperate, and it's starting to show because of the Bryce Huff contract. The Bryce Huff contract and the Saquon contract are both overpays, in overpays. my opinion. Both of them. Yeah. Because we knew what the problems were with – Bryce Huff going into it. Not a single person, not a single person predicted Bryce Huff at 17. No See, one. And that, div that division is up for grabs too, man. Dallas is a shit, sh a crap show right now. Wow, like, you're good. You can curse here. I, 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 <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, for real. Number three out there. Like, I'm just saying, the Eagles are not this juggernaut. Like, they went to the Super Bowl because they got lucky that freaking what's his name purdy got tommy, purdy got tommy johns in the middle of the game because if purdy plays that whole game they go to the san francisco wins that game and hey sometimes you need luck and that's awesome 
but like there's they're still so far below San Fran right now. They should just start selling more pieces. I'm just saying they've had yeah, they are close. they are they are losing pieces every single year that it keeps going on, and Hertz continues to show that he is not the elite quarterback that they thought they were paying for. And, and so, I don't know if you guys looked at the Huff deal, but I think it's the last the the year after when he leaves. The year he leaves, it's like a twenty seven million dollar cap hit for him yeah. not even being there. On like, the, on the line. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Someone was comparing. Someone was comparing Reddick and Huff and like the deals, and I'm like, bro, like look at twenty twenty seven. There's thirty million there. Just like I'm sorry, but J D. He's been meticulous. I mean, yeah, we have some dead cap loss in this year. Really, really hurt. But it's mostly been guys Holy that should have panned out and didn't. Not just just negligence. You know what I mean? There's a difference. Right. I didn't look at the Huff contract. Once he left, oh. he died to me. Yeah. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. This yeah. is the contract <laughs> Thank you. Manager, is, <laughs> you didn't know that, Tigo? Bro, I remember I when I saw that. that. Incredibly intelligent. But holy crap! Now where's the where's the? I it's need... desperation, like you said. Now, it's desperation. Contract. Yeah, look at the Barkley con. And I'm kind of curious if the Barkley one has. Jesus, a... dude. Oh, he must. He must. There it is. It's Read it out. A... Now you better hope they restructure down the road. But Huff ain't going to. He's going to be 28. Both of them. Yeah. There's, you can't let them. Dude, ready? 2024, <laughs> four million dollar cap hit. 2025. Five and a half million dollar cap hit. 2026, nine million dollar cap hit. Remember, it was a three year deal. So in 2027, the year he hits free agency and he walks, 20 million dollar cap hit. That's that's for Saquon. That's the Saquon contract. Oh $20 shit, that contract. that lines up with Huff pretty well too. Bring that up. It's like have 40 million dollars in dead cap hit in 2027 <laughs> on two players. Yep. Their window is narrow, and they're not as high as they need to be right now for it to be that narrow. Look, it's the NFC. The only team that they need to be worried about is the San Francisco 49ers, but that is one hell of a team to be worried about. I don't think they're built quite the same either. Nope. Dude, the contract. The contract is insane. It is a $19.3 million dead cap head. Jesus, bro. <laughs> oh, that just screams desperation. Yes. That, that really screams desperation. The guys want their AAV, and, and if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But, like, why not just move it all up to the first few years? Like, what are you – is their cap space so minimal that they had to spread it out like that? No, it's like so a, pre- you... a pregnant snake. Like, Look at no. the void years. Yeah. Six million, yeah. four million, two million. <laughs> no, no, but that's I mean, they're, hope, cap they're hoping the cap. They're hoping the cap balloons. I know, but, but like that still sucks, though, man. That's that's still some quality cap space gone when you're trying to fill out your roster. <laughs> and what if when it does balloon, all these other but teams have a hundred million to spend, and you don't? It's not even just that. I'm looking at their cap numbers for 2027. Ling Johnson is a 16 million dollar dead cap hit. A.J. Brown is a $10 million dead cap hit. Landon Dickerson is a $14 million dead cap hit. Bryce Huff is a $27 million dead cap hit. Saquon Barkley is a $19 million uh, dead cap hit. And Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is a $13 million dead cap hit. No, that's wrong. They already, they're paying that this year. No. Next year? When's the void year? No. Yeah. Yeah, they pay that in it's- 2027. Dude, 27, they're all lined up for. They know what's happening. They know what's going on, and then they're just going to. Maybe Roseman knows something we don't, but. Oh, you it, know what it, it is? It sure looks like it. Roseman's a brilliant. Oh, he's brilliant. 2027 is technically the last year of the Jalen Hurts deal. You can okay. cut Jalen in 2027, and you'd save $21 million. Which would, in mm. essence, cover the dead, the yeah, the dead the cap Saquon. for the void years, yeah. No, so no, you're picking no, you just, could, just the, you could just hard the, the huff deal. Yeah, you could hard reset in 2027. Suck yeah. it up. Everyone's gonna suck. You still have a great defense because you're gonna have Jalen Carter up there, which was highway robbery that they got. But you could hard reset and run it back in 2028. How old is Hertz? He will be. 
29 Wait. in 2027. 29? Is he really? He okay. is 26 right now. <sighs> I don't know if I would have tailored it that way. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, because then you're choosing, okay, do you want to take Hertz or all that? De like, either or. You extend Hertz and keep them into the twilight for what? No. I mean, you're going to you're gonna be drafting a QB here in a few years. You have to. He's not the guy. No. Well, yeah. I mean, that's a whole that in argument. terms of like, <laughs> a, no, 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 no. He's the guy for them. He, he is good enough for them to win games and for them to go out and possibly win a Super Bowl. But what I mean by that is like, he's not – you do everything in your power to keep Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Aaron You're not Brady, winning because Brady, of him. Patrick Mahomes, Joe yeah, Burrow. Yeah. That, that's what I mean and when I say the guy. Don't worry. We're not clipping and quoting you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are y'all final thoughts, man? I, I, I'm going to jump off and go grab my kids from MMA practice. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean no, to hop good. on so long. No, no, no. Daniel, appreciate you coming on, man. Um, this has got a lot more interesting. Hey, I like talking numbers, too. I really do. Um, yeah. Tigo loves numbers. <laughs> I love it, dude. I'm a math miner, dude. Um, I don't know. As far as I, I let me go first. That way Tigo's still yeah. here with you. Um, at 10, everybody wants to say, oh, well, now what do you want to do at 10? Honestly, can we just let this breathe, man? We got better today. Like, right. it was a win, man. And it seems like he's given us – Tyron Smith, wasn't that a Friday night? It was a Friday night uh, acquisition. Dude, it was Friday it, night, and I know that. Because JD loves, it. yeah, dude, he loves giving us a present on the weekends, man. I love it. Like, let's just take it. Honestly, get a hold of Mike Mike Mayock though. Get get Mike Mayock on the phone and say, hey, buddy, you can't roll with Gardner Minshew. Come on up, man. Hop those Vikings. Hop the de hop, hop fucking Sean Payton. <laughs> uh, the Vikings will be way up there anyway, but hop New England or whoever is at 11 and uh, just give us a third. And then like Tigo said, we got a pair of thirds. We got a pair of fourths. Um, and then we, I'd like to see Joe with two thirds and two fourths and let's see what he comes away with. Yeah. Dude, put a three and a four together, move up, put, you know, two, two threes together. Let him cook, man. But by all means, do that. not... Do not judge this man's moves anymore. He is smarter than all of us. Give him the benefit of the doubt. And just be happy with whatever he does because guess what? He knows better than we do what this team needs now. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Hey, appreciate you for jumping on, brother. Appreciate you. Yep. Later, y'all. Have a good one, Dana. Dane's the best. He is, man. He's one of the OGs, man. He, he literally, man, like this dude is is always present, always relevant. Uh, nothing but love for him. I'm glad he was able to go ahead and jump on. All right, all right, man. Since it's breaking down, what what are you thinking? How are you feeling? I know you, we both agree we're feeling pretty darn good right now. Yeah, man. Dude, that's really it. I don't want to keep. I don't have to keep going on about it. Yeah. It's, it's it's the team today is better than it was yesterday, and that's all that matters. That's, it, that's all that matters. I don't care about future assets i don't care about future cap hits i don't care about dude i could care less go all in go all in that's at it at the end of the day if that's if it. we're able to go ahead and see a super bowl because of it's these always... these it's all i care about it's all i care about you think the rams are upset that they went all in got their super bowl and have now been trying to piece teams together over the last couple of years i doubt it i doubt it very much they care um and I, i'm right i'm in that same boat i would not care if somehow, some way, um, the New York Jets uh, make all these moves and we're able to go ahead and get into a Super Bowl. So for me, man, I, I, I'm with you, dog. I think the New York Jets got better today. Um, what's crazy is we were talking about being OK, dropping in terms of overall defensive efficiency. If it meant our offense got better, I think like, like I really believe defensively we're probably going to be better again this year. And offensively, Aaron Rodgers is going to be the quarterback. We've already added Mike Williams. And with that 10th overall pick, it's either going to be an offensive lineman or a wide receiver. Or apparently Brock Myers. So, I, 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 you know, I digress. At the end of the day, the, the offense also gets weapons added to it. So, this is, this is possibly going to be the best freaking offseason JD has been able to cook up, man, put together. I, 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 was, I, I can admit when I was wrong, man. I was, I was wrong. I was, I was definitively one of the individuals who who thought he was asleep at the helm 
Um, I didn't know if he was going to figure it out or not. He clearly did. And I'm ecstatic, man. I'm pumped. The New York Jets got better, and the draft is still a couple of weeks away, a few weeks away. So thanks for hopping on, bro. It's always fun to go ahead and share this kind of stuff with uh, with fellow fans. Uh, appreciate everybody in the chat, man, for jumping in. I was supposed to be on for about 30 minutes, and, of course, y'all guys got me. Uh, couldn't help myself. Uh, Tigo is also good at that. You know, when you think you're you're out, he kind of, like, pulls you back in. So, Tigo, oh, appreciate it. <laughs> hit it, hit it. <laughs> He's going to be sitting outside of MMA practice. Just MMA practice practice is like, uh, Dad, you were supposed to be here an hour ago. Um, what the crap? But uh, hey, everybody that, that joined on the chat, I appreciate you. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, do me a favor. Uh, jump off real quick. Go into YouTube. Like and subscribe the channel. Lots of giveaways coming in for the 2024 season. The majority of those giveaways are going to be individuals eligible on the YouTube channel. So I urge you to go ahead and make sure you plug yourself in there. Turn on that uh, alert icon. So when those those uh, giveaways drop, you're getting your notifications. I appreciate y'all, man. 203 of y'all in here chopping it up with us, talking about the New York Jets uh, acquisition of Hassan Reddick. Chef JD is doing big boy things. And for all of us that doubted him, we apologize, and I'm one of them. JD, I'm sorry. Keep cooking. I can't wait to see what you got to do for the draft. Y'all have a good night.